Welcome to Blitz Chess number 23. In today's video I'm going to play a Blitz game, I'm going to walk you through what I think, and your job as a viewer is to pause the video from time to time, maybe ask yourself what would I play in this position, and in that way we can all learn. Okay, we found a game, we're playing with the black pieces against whoopsie, and good luck. We're gonna play knight f6 against d4, knight f3, we're gonna play d5, very classical stuff, g3. Um, yeah, in this position I think I can take out my bishop outside the pawn chain first, both bishop f5 and bishop g4 are, are played. I think bishop f5 is... Uh. Okay, I'm going to play bishop f5. Bishop g4, I'm potentially maybe trading the bishop for the knight in some positions. I don't want to do that. I want to play London style. Bishop f5, h6, e6, knight b7, bishop e7, and survive this. If I get this setup without any problems, then black will be fine. I'm going to continue doing that. I'm not going to be worried about knight h4 yet. So, for example, e6, knight h4, bishop e4, f3, bishop g6. I get to ruin white's pawn structure a little bit before my bishop totally um, disappears up from the board. So I'm not worried about that. Knight h4, bishop e4, f3. I can even play bishop takes b1 maybe and bishop b4 and maybe take on c4. I think that those kind of ideas are, are working if I have played c6 before because then I can halt with b5. But for now, I think it's not working. Knight c3 is played by my opponent. And now is knight h4. I think knight h4 is kind of a threat now. So I'm going to play h6. If knight h4 now, I just realized that I can't play bishop h7 because this is folding. That's a, that's a, a little inaccuracy by, my, by, by me. Um, and white plays this. Queen takes b7. I don't... I think that I'm getting enough, enough stuff going on. And I'm going to be quicker. I've been... I've been definitely working a little bit on my speed. Okay, that's a little bit of a lie, but I've been working on chess in general, so that works. That kind of, yeah, functions as working in speed, I guess. I'm going to play c5, which is a little bit risky. I wanted to play rook b8, rook b8 originally, but after queen c6 in this line, rook b8, queen c6, white is getting the other pawn back, and I'm losing a pawn, which is not something that bothers me. Normally, I, I am pretty liberal when it comes to... Uh, <laughs> sacrificing pawns maybe that's not the right word but you get what i mean so i'm gonna play c5 the reason is that now rook b8 queen c6 rook c8 i get another tempo i don't think white would play queen c6 in that position by the way i think white maybe would do something like queen takes a7 or queen a6 the reason why i'm saying it's sharp is because now i have to calculate all sorts of knight moves knight b5 threatening knight c7 knight e5 threatening queen takes a8 but white castles, which gives me a little bit of um, time to, to do something in the meantime. I'm going to play rook b8. Queen takes a7, I'm going to take on d4. And now bishop c5 is a big threat. So knight takes d4 would run into bishop c5. And I I believe I'm winning in that position. So queen takes d4 has to be played. I am down a pawn and I it seems like I'm going to lose yet another pawn. Which is kind of bad news. I don't see the count uh, compensation right away. But I do have a more active pieces technically, so practically speaking, I have chances. But on 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 all honesty, it looks a little bit tough. I'm gonna sacrifice the pawn. I have to play actively. This is the best defense, active defense normally. And it is a blitz game, so I have to get my pieces out. My opponent is running a little out of time, running a little bit out of running out of time a little bit. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm gonna play queen e7, get rid of that. Rook takes d7 is not working. I know that queen takes d7 would be losing. The rook takes e7, I just take back with the knight. So everything's fine. e4, I have rook b4 at all times. Now e4 would be hanging three times. And my opponent plays it, which is pretty weird. I think this is a blunder. After knight takes e4, am I not winning? Winning a pawn. There we go, we won a pawn. This is what I was saying. Just relax, play for active defense. Active defense is the way to go. Okay, I can play both rook takes e4 or bishop takes e4. I'm going to play rook takes e4 because it gains a tempo on the queen. And uh, it does get on the way of the x-ray of the bishop. And it's an x-ray because there's a knight on the way. This is what we call an x-ray in chess. But uh, I'm not worried about that. I calculated some lines briefly and it's working out as, as, as far as I'm concerned. Bishop g4 is an option here. Knight e5 is an option. Another option. I want to play knight f6 because the knight on d7 is a little bit passive. But I'm worried about knight h4. I'm a little bit tempted to sacrifice and play something like knight g4 actually. So I think knight f6, knight h4 is not working because of this and knight g4. My opponent goes for it, but this is very risky. I'm going to take on f2, I'm going to take on h4. 
I'm not sure about this. If you have to play bishop e3, then I just take knight takes e3, I get my exchange back, your pawn structure is ruined. I'm absolutely fine in that position. It is true that white has two extra pawns, or, well, two passers on the queen side, but if you will get to use those two pawns if white survives. And I think the king is going to be pretty, pretty endangered. This is the move that white plays, expected more or less. I can play queen takes h4 first. Is that useful? I think it is. I think it is, yeah. I'm going to play queen takes h4 first. Queen takes h2 is a big threat. And now I, I, I have ideas. <laughs> now, nah, let me just process this. I, I, I could take on f on e3 and then take with the knight. Or, or not. Okay, I'm going to stop joking. This is the time where I have to concentrate. The knight takes e3. I feel like just keep, just sacrifice that either way and continuing my, my attack. It's so tempting. I wish I had bishop d6. Not working. Knight takes e3. Bishop takes e3. King h1. Rook c8. Or rook c2. Okay. Okay, let's do that. The dark squares are permanently weak. Which is nice. And I'm going for the king. I'm just going for the king. I have to watch out. Rook c8 has the extra um, advantage of, of preventing rook c1. Queen there is played by my opponent. Annoying move. Annoying move. I'm going to play bishop f4. Trying to cement something on e5. A bishop on f4. To be careful. I have to watch out. I'm going to play bishop f4. If rook d4, I have e5. Rook c2 is always in the air. My opponent's clock is also ticking. My goodness. Okay, should I take? Oh, this is a tough one. This is a tough one. Okay, I'm going to take with the queen. Or should I take this way? Oh, this is tough one. Okay, I'm going to take with this. I think my opponent's king is a little bit unsafe. I'm going to get rook c2 and king h7. I also have rook e8 ideas. Rook e3. Bishop e4. I like rook e8. I'm going to play g5. Very risky move, but... Okay, chess is risky. Okay. Okay, that's not working. Okay, let's take let's take this. It's free, right? Rook c2. We're running out of time, but we're in the good side of this. Let's give checks. Let's gain time. G4, G3. Win c5. Rook c2. Now we're winning because we we pin the queen and the king. And rook f2 is not possible. There we go. That was a good game. I think that at some point closer to the end. Yeah, we sacrificed a little bit too many pawns in the opening. But this was a good decision to, to make sure that the, the dark squares are permanently weak for the rest of the game. And actually, in this position after this, it's also important to keep the queens. Not only because my opponent is running out of time more than me. But, um, well, is that true even? I think we were both uh, in ru uh, running out of time by this moment. But I think that the king's safety... King safety wise, white is worse, meaning that I want to keep the queens over the board. And that's maybe a little bit instructive, hopefully. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, any suggestions, please let me know in the comments. Subscribe, give a like. I would really appreciate it. Um, these videos take some time to make. And if you took a look at the bloopers, the amount of footage that I don't upload, you would laugh. It's ridiculous. Thank you very much for watching. Have a nice day.